Good evening and welcome to the Return Homestead. My name is Mike and my wife Marty and I homestead 50 acres in southeastern Kentucky. Today we are finally out of the shower. I am so done with doing that tile. It's time to start working on the kitchen. So Mike is down taking care of chickens right now. He will get them skinned and he will get them ready for me to piece out. Uh, the roosters we make dog food out of for sunshine and uh, the rest will go in the freezer for us and broth. So let's see what Mike's up to. And he is taking care of the chickens that, the chicken that he has dispatched already and he'll bring it up to me. Now we're gonna ice these up to cool them down completely before we bag them up and put them in the freezer. The chickens that are for us, we will part out and put in different bags. So if we want legs one day, we'll have all legs and so on and so forth. And they will be in portions ready for us. But this is all part of homesteading. This is how you become self-sufficient is to raise your own food and currently the only animals we have on the property are the chickens well we have cats they take care of any mice we have and then we have sunshine so this is homesteading guys well we got the chickens taken care of now marty can get the dog food made for sunshine uh, we're going to move on to other projects. One of the things we've been working on is trying to get this shower finished up in this 2001 Fleetwood. Y'all, this has taken a lot longer than we expected it to. But then I'm not a tile setter, and that took a lot longer than expected. Um, mainly because I kept making changes to the design of the tiles, which meant I had to recalculate how everything got laid in. But today we still got to get the drain hooked up. When I went to hook up the drain a couple of days ago, uh, the last piece I had to get connected was just this little uh, p-trap and the p-trap glues on uh, to the drain coming out of the shower and then there's a coupler that screws on here to connect it to the drain for the house well for some reason that didn't want to line up and eventually it got cross-threaded and once it got cross-threaded I couldn't line it up that meant I had to pull it off quickly before the glue had time to set fully um, now I'm gonna have to go down there and clean up the pipe get all of the old glue off of it with a little sandpaper, get that back down to a clean, smooth surface, and then we'll install a new one. So we did have to buy a complete new P-trap. So all we need is just this one little bottom part here. So we'll just unscrew that coupling. And then I'll have a, another 90 degree coupling sitting around. Uh, it's extra, but that's what we needed was just that part got another shirt on because it, it's dirty under there. Last time I crawled under there I got so dirty I had to go change clothes so I'm gonna make sure I got something I can take off afterward. It's a little warm so I want to get started on this plus it's about to start raining. It's uh, it's never ending here on the homestead. There's always a lot to look at and pay attention to. On top of all of this we've got an air conditioner that's not working. We're trying to figure out how we're going to stay cool for the evening. Uh, we did manage to stay cool last night and we're gonna have to do that same thing again tonight. But we're also hoping that we can take a shower in a place that's not super hot. Uh, that would be this house. So I got to get this shower fixed up. So if you guys will excuse me, I'm going to get out of the house and get busy. When Marty and I bought this place, this kitchen was completely set up. It was perfectly functional. We actually had some family that was going to come for a visit. And so we got this place all cleaned up and we set it up for someone to stay in it for a week. Um, it wasn't the cleanest. It was as clean as we could get it, but it was old and heavily used. Uh, there was a lot of mouse feces up underneath the cabinetry. So obviously there had been some serious penetration problems. 
That's one of the things that we've noticed about this Fleetwood Mobile Home is they didn't do anything really to prevent mice from coming up through the subfloor. So any place there was a hole in the subfloor for plumbing to come through, they cut the hole much bigger than the plumbing was, and then they just left an open hole. Since it's underneath the cabinet, you don't see it, so it must not be a problem, but that just allows the mice in. So we do have to clean all of that mess up, and we'll be making sure to repair the subfloor every place we can. So we still gotta pull all of this plumbing out. This panel's a little bit thicker than most I've seen for the bottom of a sink and it doesn't cut apart easily. So the next step on dealing with the sink is going to be to get this panel out of here. It's actually wrapped around the plumbing. We do need to shut the water off before I can take a chance of breaking those pipes off. That is CPVC, it's a little bit brittle. Once we started taking the cabinets out, we found that we had mice feces and a lot of ickiness under here. We've gotta be able to take this panel out in order to do that. Mike's got to go back under the house and get the water turned off so that we can get this taken care of. In the meantime, we were going to shiplap this whole wall. The problem is here. At one point in time, there was a water leak. And once we got the cabinets out, we looked at this and thought, yeah, this can't stay. So what we've decided to do instead is to remove all the fog, the vinyl over gypsum. We're gonna take this whole wall out up to that separation there. And we're gonna resheat this. So we'll finish it out great. So we're gonna get rid of all this nasty, icky stuff and get ready to set cabinetry. But before we can put new sheetrock up here, we're going to rebuild this wall here. So this whole wall will get closed in, leaving an entryway into the living area currently. Once this wall gets put up, then we can wrap the sheetrock all the way around and we'll have a cohesive look to the whole kitchen. So today all we're doing is just ripping the VOG off of this wall. We want to get a good look at the studs and find out where those studs are to see if we need to place any more in order to support the shelving units we're going to be building in here. We are building open shelving. We don't want cabinets. Marty's not real thrilled about operating cabinet doors all the time when she's in the kitchen. It just makes sense to take those doors off and just have open shelving. So that's the way we're going to do it. And we're going to be building a pantry into this corner. So we'll be adding a small closet area uh, into this corner to, to make Marty's pantry. Uh, we're going to put in a brand new sink. We'll uh, get a deep sink. This had like a six inch deep sink in it. Uh, I don't know if y'all like six inch sinks, but I, if it's not at least nine inches, I don't want to use it. So we're going to be putting a deeper sink in here, but we'll leave the sink centered up underneath the window just like it was before. The stove has the electrical in place, but we're planning on getting a gas stove. So we'll probably be pulling this electrical out completely and it'll have to be replumbed for the gas. So we'll eventually have to do that conversion to convert this over to gas, but we'll put a gas stove in here. I am going to build an extra thick shelf. So probably about a six or eight inch thick shelf that will stick out here and hold the fan unit for our exhaust fan. So we'll use this existing hole that's already cut in the wall and uh, put a new bracket on the outside to protect it from wasps and other insects from coming in. But we'll hide the fan and all of the equipment up inside of that shelf. That'll give Marty an extra place to store stuff above the stove and give us a good ventilation for the stove top. And then we're gonna build a small bit of countertop on this side of the stove. We'll bring an L off of the corner here, and that area of the kitchen will be for tea service, coffee service, and all of those sundry things that will be set up there. Refrigerator will go approximately where it is, and then we're going to build a large island for the center of the kitchen. There was no island in this kitchen before. It was just an open floor plan, and it wasn't very functional as a kitchen. So that's why we're gonna be putting an island in here, and it's gonna be a large one. So we've got some really big plans for the island. Marty and I have had our eyes on a piece of tile over at Floor & Decor. Absolutely beautiful. We're looking forward to using that tile here on the countertop. Yes, I'm gonna set some more tile. Probably be the last time. 
but I think I can handle that small a job, especially since I'm going to be building the island so I can build it to exactly fit the tile. So once we get the tile on the island, that leaves us with countertops that we need for the shelving. And we've decided to also use tile for that countertop as well. We'll probably use a similar size tile to what we used on the wall in the bathroom, uh, probably just a plain white tile rather than a marble tile. And we'll use that to make our counter surface. So the options that we had for countertops were either a formica, which is the most common one. We can also do a silestone or a quartz, even a marble. Uh, we do have quite a few marble places here in London, Kentucky. But all those are extremely expensive, extremely heavy, and I don't have the tool set or skill set to install them. You have to bring in a third party to do that work. I can set a simple butcher block in here, but then you also have to re-finish that butcher block every three or four years. And so I wanted to avoid having to refinish the countertops every few years. The simplest solution we could come up with was to use the tile. And this won't be the first time we've done a tile countertop in the depot. When we did the pantry, we built a countertop shelf that went around the entire pantry and we tiled that. So we already know what that's like to put tile on a countertop. That worked out fantastically well. So we're looking forward to seeing how this is going to turn out.
So the idea here is I want to get this stud connected to this wall, and that's going to tie these two walls together. This stud is fairly well squared with this wall. It's going in exactly where it needs to fit in order for the drywall to squeeze in tight here in the corner. And I've got just enough stud behind that drywall for me to be able to get some screws in to hold this wall in place on this end. And then I can square the other end of the wall up with this stud, and hopefully we'll have a nice square plug wall. In no time at all, we got a brand new wall for our kitchen. This wall is just the beginning. We've still got to put a cap on top of this. We've got to build an extension out at the end of this wall to cover the end of the refrigerator. So the refrigerator is going to go in here. Um, that wall will also provide some shear strength. So this won't be so loose and floppy when we're done. And then we're going to move on to building counters and uh, cabinetry. Actually, I think Marty wants to do open shelving in here. So we're gonna keep this as simple as we possibly can. We're gonna be buying our lumber at a big box store. We're just gonna be using standard pine two by fours to build our kitchen out. Can we go out and get more expensive woods? Yeah, but we don't need them. This will work just fine. Uh, we could go out and buy all of the cabinets already made. Those are in the big box stores ready to get off the shelf, but they're relatively expensive and these two by fours are not. So we're gonna use the skills we have and build out our kitchen with the two by fours that we have easy access to. But for today, I think we're done. We got, we got the drain hooked up in the shower. We got all of the plumbing fixtures connected, tested our shower out, and it is ready now for us to go in there and take a shower. Then we got this floor cleared out, got our very first wall built, and got it up into place. And that is just the construction we did today. We also harvested a couple of chickens that will allow Marty to be able to make uh, dog food for sunshine so we can keep her in feed without having to go down to the store and buy kibble. Wow, that was a lot to get done in one day. We do appreciate you joining us on the Return Homestead. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please take a moment, go ahead and open that window up and subscribe. While you've got the window open, please hit that thumbs up button so everyone knows you like the video and we'll see you next time.